Thank you for auditing Professor Sky's record review, the only first listen new music review show hosted by a French professor immediately after gardening in the rain. I'm going to be doing this in a couple different segments today. I'm going to shower and actually my wife is going to give me a haircut, so that'll be pretty exciting, a reason to stick around. But I want to be discussing the album Wake Up by Hazel English. And the way that I want to do this is sort of in two different ways. One, I want to discuss the genre that it's a member of, which I just learned about with this album. And then in the sort of second half, I want to actually talk about this specific album and what makes it a good example of this genre. The genre is called dream pop. What? Is that, is that a thing? Did someone just write that on Wikipedia to goof with me? Is that a real thing? I told my wife about this while we were digging holes in the mud and the dirt. And she goes, well, I don't know what, what dream pop is, but this is definitely dream pop. This totally makes sense. My first reaction when I read that was, oh, dream pop. That's some white people stuff right there. <laughs> and obviously, I'm quite white, but for some reason that idea kind of came to my head. Like when I first heard that, I was like, what kind of subgenre of subgenre of subgenre is this? But I want to define it a little bit and give you a reason as to why you should listen to it. Because this is quite nice. This is quite a good album. It's quite fun, worth listening to. And the key to understanding dream pop is actually to understand that it's just a more accessible version of shoegaze music. If you're not familiar with shoegaze, I might describe that a little bit too. But basically, it all goes back to this alleged murderer, Phil Spector. Phil Spector. That's what it all goes back to. If you don't know about him, well, do a little bit of research. Pretty important music producer. Uh, hey, look, there's Nelson. I didn't know he worked with Spectre. Funny. See, there he is. Weird. The thing that Phil Spector did was he created pop music that was huge, that was loud, that was very, very, very textured with just what he called the wall of sound, right? So you had this just massive amounts of music. Think of Be My Baby as the best example. If you think of Be My Baby just on its own, you just think, oh yeah, that's just a song. Be my, be my baby. But then you listen to it more carefully and you go mad at the genius of the production. Just the amount of like instruments being played all at the same time and the driving feeling and the clean guitar lines that come in and pick out and give you a melody while you're just being assaulted by all of this insane amount of noise. It's an amazing feel. Uh, the Beach Boys picked it up with much of their best music, and basically since then, there have been a small subset of musicians who have just been trying to do what Phil Spector has done. Not the bad stuff, the good stuff, to produce music like that. And essentially, when you're talking about shoegaze, you're talking about a more like abstract version of it where it's a lot more layers and a little bit less melody driven, a little bit less pop to it. And here with this dream pop, and I am basing this 100% on this one album. If you are a dream pop expert, as I like to say, my ignorance is profound, meaning my ignorance has profundity to it. I admit my ignorance and I want to be taught. Is this not a good example of dream pop? I think it is because it just makes sense to me when you hear it. From the very beginning, you get this kind of 80s style synthesizer mixed in with clean guitar lines, and then all throughout, the basic Phil Spector drum beat. going to the chapel and we're gonna get married. I think that, that's the most noticeable use of that in Phil Spector. That basic beat, the emotion that comes with doom, 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 ka, that feeling is so specific that that gives you. And so in this sort of dream pop, it also has a kind of otherworldly feel. And when you have this kind of layering of instruments, and then the guitar, always very clean, very clear, just picking bang, 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 little melodies out over it. And then her singing, and her singing, it's not, I actually find most of the female singers on Phil Spector's stuff to be kind of grating and annoying. Um, this isn't that way. She sings in a way that's very ethereal, sort of over the music. I can't tell you any of the lyrics on this album. It feels as though the, the singing is just another part of the fabric of the music the fabric of this dream. It's poppy and it's a dream. 
It's dream pop. Apparently, that's a real thing. So, now that I've given you the basic idea of what this sounds like, maybe that sounds interesting to you, and I would give it a shot if it does. Um, I'm going to shower, get the mud off my hands. Oh no, now it's on the bed. Oh, I just can't stop getting dirty. I, it's terrible. It must be so terrible living with me. Okay, um, I'm, I'm gonna clean off the bed from the dirt that I just put on it, uh, and I'm gonna take a shower, I'm gonna get a haircut, and then I'm gonna get more specific about Hazel English, who is apparently an Australian-born, living in Oakland singer. Do I have a history with Oakland? You bet I do. Okay, on the other side. Okay, so uh, while I'm getting my haircut, I'm just gonna introduce what we're going to do now. We are going to listen to a little bit of this music so you can get a sense of what the dream pop is. I want you to listen to the instrumentation, that uh, doom, 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 cap drumming, uh, and the very dreamlike, uh, agreeable vocals. I probably shouldn't look at the screen right now. Got kind of a Richard Spencer thing going, but it's okay. <laughs> Boardwalk Empire, look like that guy, Jimmy. We're watching Boardwalk Empire now. Have you seen it? Put that in the comments too. All right, back to my haircut. So listen to this for 14 seconds. So I hope you heard what I heard in there, that real Philip Spector uh, aesthetic. But you know, it's done in this kind of modern age. I think a lot of times what makes maybe dream pop different is that instead of having full orchestras, they just use synthesizer sounds, or a little bit more guitar, a little bit more action in that way. Um, but the real question is, does this album have its own character? Is it just simply atmospheric music that makes you feel like you're listening to a modern version of the wall of sound? or? Is each song individual? Can you listen to it? Does it have importance that goes beyond the atmospheric? I think that's one way that often shoegaze music can get lost because you feel like you're just listening to it for the atmosphere and not for the actual songs. So let's actually talk about it. What do you think of my haircut? She did a pretty good job, right? I mean, I'm not gonna fire Angelo because no one knows, we call this doinkage in my family. Nobody knows how to fix the doinkage but Angelo. It, it's, it's amazingly recalcitrant. So, uh, let me go through with this album and explain to you why it does more than just simply set an atmosphere. Now, the opening track that I just played for you really illustrates the whole aesthetic of the dream pop feeling. Um, it starts with xylophone and then the 80 synth sound, and that sort of, in a way, sets the bar low because it's so clearly in this kind of comfortable zone inside of the genre. But with the next track, Shaking, she makes it clear that she's doing something more interesting. Uh, it has this beautiful melody in, in the bridge and it goes way beyond the kind of simple classification you might put it in. There's some really hidden depth and there's a chance, and this is only on maybe the third listen of this album that I realized, there's a very good chance that she is a truly incredible singer. Now the fact I have to say that in that way is part of the pitfalls of this genre. The fact that I can listen to an entire album by a singer two or three times and only on the third time go, wait a minute, is she a great singer? Is part of the problem how her voice can often be lost in the mix. The next track, Wake Up, is further evidence of the sort of deeper qualities of this album. Um, it's basically kind of more straight ahead pop. It's not so much in that wall of sound feeling, but she creates these nice, wandering, very complicated melodies. And I'm starting to pick up some of the lyrics. You know, that's one of the, the comments I've made about this album and about a lot of music like this that's so atmospheric. I even made this comment about, about uh, West Side Gun, the rapper, you know, that often when someone is so atmospheric, you can lose track of the words. But this song, it's very much about, ironically, waking up from a dream. Pop. Waking up from a dream. Pop. Okay. And also, I, I don't want you to accuse me of using the dogs as props, but come on. I mean, if you got these guys behind you, how can you have a bad video? <laughs> Look at how sleepy Bo is. He's like, I don't care about dream pop. Are you going to pet my head? I'm gonna pick your head. Um, the next track, uh, Off My Mind, has nice kind of floating melodies. Uh, this has the best usage of this very pronounced Phil Spector style guitar usage of just a very strong lead guitar that's clean lines, follows the vocals. Um, Combat is where the album really starts to grow on you. 
Again, I was listening to this uh, yesterday after digging the holes and after showering and getting my hair cut, and uh, my wife was like, this is really starting to grow on me. I'm really starting to like it. In a way, the more you live inside of this album, the more you like it. <clears throat> The next track, Five and Dime, is a little bit more of a retro soul vibe, not so much Phil Spector in general, but this is nice because it's a little bit more variation. For an album that is so stylistically consistent, it actually doesn't get boring. And I think that's because of these small changes between songs, that a song like Five and Dime um, doesn't feel exactly like you know the opening track, but this, it still feels like it's in the same world. Uh, like a Drug, one of the weaker tracks, uh, sort of a super Phil Spector percussion style. I will say that the other singer that she reminds me of and that I think doesn't get enough credit in terms of her influence on modern music is Licky Lee, the Swedish pop, indie pop, I don't know what we call Licky Lee, but especially the way that she is able to create dreamlike vocals that are sort of smokily distant. Smokely distant vocals of Licky Lee, I think has a lot of influence. I mean, people heap as much praise and influence as they possibly can on Lana Del Rey, which she deserves often. But in this case, I would say there's more of a Licky Lee um, influence that we see in a lot of music. And really most music that's influenced by Licky Lee or has that feeling is quite nice. Um, uh, Milk and Honey, a very good track where the, the guitar follows voices. I like the theme of this. I picked up the lyrics, basically some guy is failing to seduce her, uh, which is quite nice, but maybe he succeeds. Uh, the vocals on this one are higher in the mix. I would love to have an album from her that is underproduced. This album is very well produced. I wouldn't even say it's overproduced, but there's so much of it. I would love just to hear her play her songs on guitar, piano, whatever, and sing and just let the vocals really come out so we see what they are. Uh, the final track is called Work It Out and it, it's leaning towards that. It has a real depth to it, it's kind of a slow song, it feels a little bit less stylized, a little bit downbeat. Um, the good, you know, Phil Spector leading guitar lines. Did I call him Philip Spector earlier today? I think I did. Phil Spector. Um, and I, there's a lot of hope. I would love if she made an entire album more in the vein of this last track that feels a little bit more personal, a little bit less in this kind of stylized dream pop world. I said I was gonna talk about Oakland, um, so I'm just gonna insert that here because I forgot to in the original first take here. Um, I did live in Oakland for a while, and I don't know, there's some kind of connection that I'm drawing here between this idea of dream pop which in the beginning I rather obnoxiously called it some white people stuff, right? Um, I think that has to do with some of my white guilt for being part of the Oakland gentrification. So I moved there in the aftermath of September 11th in, in October 2001. Awesome time to move to California. And I was sort of at the forefront of transforming Oakland from the very kind of vibrant multicultural place to basically being Brooklyn West. I moved into Clark Street, and that was just when they had decided to rename that part of the town Temescal. And when you rename something, all of a sudden you can jack up the rents. All the cool places that I loved when I lived there were just about to go away. You know, Global Video, the best video store I've ever been to, uh, all these great hot dog stores, even the best deli that I've ever been to. What's it called? What's it called? I used to get the Italian assorted with Fritos flavor twists, underrated snack. Genova's, Genova's Delicatessen, the best food you could possibly have. I went back there a couple years ago. I'm not joking, they've been replaced by apothecaries. Apothecaries. So I don't know. I think I have a, a weird relationship to Oakland because I loved it, but I am part of the reason that it changed so much and that it became much like Brooklyn. But who cares? I'm not gonna hold that against Hazel English. It's also a very vibrant place filled with culture. Um, and I haven't been there in a couple years, so who knows? Maybe it got better again. Um, so, there you go. Uh, one last thing about this album. Uh, the cover's very good. It's her in a kind of a stylized red suit. Maybe a kind of thing that you might have in the, the hip happen in town of Oakland. You know, this idea of wearing a, uh, a red suit with a red hat. Um, maybe that's pointing towards the over-stylized nature of her music. Maybe it'd be nice to see her just be a little bit more herself, a little bit less in affect. 
but who knows. All right, well then, for Genova's Delicatessen, for both of my dogs, that's Toby, and that's Bo. Look at Bo, huh? Okay, there's the camera. So I'm just getting my haircut here, and uh, I realized that um, I'm staring at all these, my music memorabilia, you know? We got Kanye, we got lots of Dylan and Daft Punk, and uh, uh, an anagram for Bob Dylan is Bland Boy. But you never thought of that. Did you?